half hours done. Finally, we're going to get to the timesheet approval. That's the last user story that I'm going to be covering tonight. Do the equivalent to timesheet approval um, with validators, and we're going to see how that's done. We're going to we're going to get to see the validators for the enter hours, which we never created, so we're going to have to create it. And we're also going to create the validator for the timesheet approval. Okay, so let's move on to the third and final user story. Story approval. We're going to need approved timesheets controller. Approved timesheets controller. It's going to be a simple form controller. And the reason for that. It's because we're actually going to ask information from the user. What kind of information are we asking? Oh, okay. Let me see. The according to you, the UI sketches approved timesheet, at least the first version, looks like this. It's actually the employee name, okay, with a timesheet, the number of hours for that timesheet and then either an approve yes or approve no ready buttons and the manager is going to be able to click on yes or no and then submit or save the changes and if it's a yes it will change the status code of the timesheet for that employee uh, to approved and if it's a no it will change the status code of that timesheet for that employee to disapproved. And this is the new version. This is actually the one that we're going to develop where it shows, you know, Teresa Walker is about to approve or disapprove her employee timesheets. So you see the list of timesheets. You see the total number of hours for that timesheet. You see the status with the timesheet and then you can approve or disapprove okay and then either send or reset reset will put it back to what it was originally send will save the new changes and cancel will not do anything and take you back okay so it's, it's a little more user friendly the second version that's what we're going to have to implement so we're going to have to implement it as a simple form controller. That means that we're going to need to overwrite the form backing object. We're also going to do some, need to do some init binder because we're going to have a property editor. It's called the yes no property editor. And this yes no property editor is going to translate a yes here or a no here into a particular status of the timesheet. So if I click on yes here, that's going to be translated into approved for this timesheet. If I click on no, that's going to be translated to a disapproved status code. So we're going to need some kind of yes no property editor and we're going to see that later on. Um, obviously we're going to have to implement the on submit. That's the stuff that gets done when we actually submit everything and we're going to have to implement something called the send approval email or send disapproval email. Those two will be in charge of sending emails, whether they're the approval type or the disapproval type. They're going to be sending emails to the employee and to the account manager. Okay? And so let's dive into it. Approve timesheets controller. What do we need for the form backing object? Again, if we look at it, it's going to be very similar to the staff hours report. Notice, staff hours report, Okay, it's a list of timesheets from the employees that report to me. Okay, So we're going to have to provide a timesheet list object. Very well. So, here it is. We're going to return a, time, a new timesheet list with a bunch of timesheets. So what timesheets are we going to provide? Well, let's see. 
we're going to ask the application security manager to get the employee from the session. Then we're going to use that employee to get the employee ID and ask from the employee manager, very similar to the staff report. We're going to ask from the employee manager to get me all the reporting employees for that employee ID. And we're going to call it the reporting employees. Here they are. And then we're going to prepare a list of timesheets. Okay, we're going to traverse through the reporting employees and each one we're going to call it E. So we're going to get the employee ID out of each individual employee and we're going to ask the timesheet manager to get me all the timesheets from that employee. Like I said, it's very, very similar to the staff report um, controller form backing object method or function. Uh, and then we're going to get the list of timesheets for that employee and we're going to traverse through all of them and individually we're going to call it T. Now the only thing that's different here is that first of all the period ending date for that timesheet has to be equal to the current period ending date. So somehow uh, we're going to have to under our date util class we're going to have to create a method that calculates or returns a date for Monday of current week. Okay? Retur returns. Um, so, in other words, it returns the date for Monday of the current week. So, whatever that week we are in, it will return the Monday. Okay? of that current week. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow us to make sure that the pure ending date is equal to that. We'll see. We'll see what, what it does. What's, what's the difference? And then, not only that, also if the status code is equal to submitted or disapproved or approved. So I want to be able to see in the approval of timesheets, I should be able to see submitted, disapproved, or approved timesheets. Actually, you know what? Submitted is a violation of the um, of the requirements. If you guys look at the requirements for a second, let me see. I think this is the... Uh, that's why it's so important to have a clear understanding of the requirements. Okay, and being able to have a wiki with all the documentation of those requirements so you can go back and say, oh, okay, I remember now what it's supposed to do. Um, notice that only uh, timesheets that have been submitted can be approved or disapproved. Okay. So I need to be able to see, when I'm about to approve timesheets I sh as a manager, I need to be able to see timesheets from my employees that I are either submitted, that are either approved and I'm changing my mind to disapproved, or that have been disapproved and I'm about to approve them. Okay. So these are the only three statuses allowed in approve or disapprove timesheets. Notice that pay by check, if the timesheet is already paid by check, doesn't make sense to approve or disapprove, so they're not included. And also pending, if they're pending, they're not done, uh, they also do not make sense to, to, to include. Them. Okay, so it's either submitted, disapproved, or approved. So we want to see those in the current period and starting date as opposed to ending date. We'll see, we'll see what, what we're trying to accomplish there. And then if that's the case, if the timesheet um, follows or complies with this um, condition, then we add it to the timesheets. Okay, the list of timesheets that we're going to pass, and that's going to be our form backing object. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Okay. Why don't we take a break? Let's take a ten-minute break. And then we will continue with our approved timesheets controller uh, implementation. Uh, in the meantime.